The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, we are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride! Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. The use of pedagogic or educational videos has become common in our teaching and learning activities. These videos can be provided either from distance education center or produced by yourself or downloaded from internet. But they must be used efficiently. If not, they become cumbersome and useless. Take an example. Who can answer this question of $1 million? The question goes thus. What are the headlines of the television news you watched two weeks ago? For sure, it is challenging and not easy to answer this question. That is exactly what will happen to our learners if they watch a pedagogic video without respecting some principle. It will be very difficult for them to remember what was taught some time ago. So there are many principles that must be respected. If these principles are not respected, the teaching become almost useless and very, very difficult to manage in the brain or in the memory of our learners. The multimedia learning principle developed by Richard Meyer. We are leaning on his recent publication with 15 principles that was edited in 20. 21. In this principle, there are some rules that govern the multimedia learning. How do we use a pedagogic video in learning and teaching situation? The first step consists in selecting information through the sensory memory made of eyes and ears. As we can see, the information go through the eyes and the ears. So from this, when the information leaves the board, it goes directly to the working memory. Those information are channeled to the working memory or a short-term memory. But the working memory has a limited capacity of storage. After the selection is being done and the information stored in the working memory, there is an imperative to organize all what has been received now to be sent to a long-term memory for a good storage. So, the first step is selection of information. The second step is organization is of information. And the third step is integration. This step will help the learner not to forget all what has been taught before. It is now obvious that there are some principles that must be respected for the selection organization and integration to be well done 
The first principle is the learner activity, which entails the behavioral attitude and the cognitive attitude, whereby the learner is taking down note, is doing sketch, is thinking in order to select, organize, and integrate. A passive attitude will not help the learning situation. That is why after watching a TV program passively, some time after, we cannot remember what we saw and hear. The second principle is a segmentation. As we earlier mentioned, the working memory has a limited storage. It is therefore imperative to select the necessary information step by step. Let us take an example of our distance education video. To use it efficiently in an interactive manner. For example, the first segmentation can be at the level of a real life situation, looking at the problem situation in the video provided, summarize it in your own words, three sentences maximum. It is obvious that by so doing, the learner will think, select and organize him or herself, and this will induce or lead to an effective and efficient learning situation. Again, we can ask to do the second segment of our cheating. For example, exploiting the activities and the summary on video. You can ask them after they have watched a video, they can summarize what they have learned in order to help them to do their selection, the organization and the integration. We can do this second activity so on and so forth. Bearing in mind that all the activities must be segmented in small elements in order to help for a good understanding and a secure storage in the long-term memory. The last principle is pre-training, whereby check and install the necessary prerequisite. We are going to look at it in two directions. In the technical direction, which means that before you carry out an activity or a learning activity, you must make sure that you have been provided with all the necessary material around you. In terms that when you are in the class, you should not be fumbling to look around for a material. Everything must be ready. If you are going in a workshop, you must make sure that the workshop is being provided with working material, either being in the workshop or in the computer lab. That is one of the pre-training principles, where technically you must make sure that everything is being set. And in the second direction of pre-training, we have a pedagogic aspect, which simply states that the pre-training principle says people learn more deeply from a multimedia message when they know the names and characteristics of the main concept. So, instead of having learners begin the lesson right away, create an introductory guide that teaches the basic definition terms and concept. Tam tam amote tam zabike 
Tem tama tonge, tem zabike, tem tem tama mote, tem zabike. Mane tambia ninyane, njubia yen.